Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna watch a letter to Heraclius by Islamic Guidance. I'm very curious to see this video, but I assume that I already know a little bit about it because I started reading Sahih al-Bukhari and within the first chapters you see the letter to Heraclius. And this was truly surprising to me because I didn't know what to expect of those hadiths. But when I started reading it, it was truly interesting. It was like a historical lesson of what happened when Prophet Muhammad sent out that letter to Heraclius and invited him to Islam. It was very well written and it gave me a different perspective on what kind of man Prophet Muhammad was. All right, with no further ado, let's have a look. When the Prophet Muhammad, at a certain time in his messengership in the Medina sent letters to various rulers and dignitaries throughout the world at the time, including the Persian Roman Emperor, for example, the Pope in Rome, Nagus of Abyssinia, Makolkis, the leader of the Copts. Yes, even that. See, if Prophet Muhammad truly sent letters to the Pope, this letter should be still in the Vatican. Egypt, and hmm. one of these letters reached Heraclius. Heraclius was the Roman Emperor at the time. And when Heraclius received this letter... Heraclius was not only the Roman Emperor of the time, that is true, but he was the Roman Empire of the Eastern Empire, which essentially means Byzantium. He called for his translator and he gathered together some of the Arabs who were there at the time and one of them happened to be Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was a cousin of the Prophet and he was the leader of Mecca and the leader of the pagans at the time and he happened to be in Jerusalem when Heraclius received this letter. He called for his translator who, translating Heraclius's question, said to them, who amongst you is closely related to that man who claims to be a prophet? And Abu Sufyan replied, I am the nearest relative to him. And Heraclius said, bring him close to me and make his companions stand behind him. Heraclius told his translator to tell Abu Sufyan's companions that he wanted to put some questions to me regarding that man and that if I told a lie, they should contradict me. So there we are, there we're in the court of Heraclius and Heraclius is saying, okay, you, your companions stand behind you. And if he tells a lie, you must tell me that he's lying. Now Abu Sufyan said, by Allah, had I not been afraid that my companions were going to label me a liar, I would have not have spoken the truth about the Prophet. So the first question Heraclius asked Abu Sufyan was this, what family status has he amongst you? Abu Sufyan replied, he belongs to a noble family amongst us. Then Heraclius asked... This here was a point of confusion to me personally. I reached out to some of you guys and I asked, does noble family stand for rich family? Because as far as I know, Muhammad doesn't come from a rich family. Some people said, yes, noble means rich. Other people said, no, noble stands for truthful, somebody that is honorable, somebody with dignity. So please let me know in the comment section, in this context, noble family, does it mean rich or does it mean truthful? Noble family amongst us. Then Heraclius asked, has anybody else amongst you ever claimed the same before him? I replied, no. Was any amongst his ancestors a king? Heraclius asked. Again, Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius asked, do the nobles or the poor follow him? Yeah, see here in this context, for example, do the nobles or the poor follow him? You clearly see the distinction. Poor standing for somebody that is obviously poor and nobles would be somebody that is rich. This is why I want to know if the previous passage means that Muhammad comes from a rich family or does it mean that he was noble, that he was truthful? Nobles or the poor follow him? Abu Sufyan replied, it is the poor who follow him. And then the Heraclius asked, 
Are his followers increasing or decreasing? Abu Sufyan replied, they are increasing. Then he asked, does anybody amongst those who embrace his religion become displeased and renounce the religion afterwards? Abu Sufyan replied, no. Heraclius then said, have you ever accused him of telling lies before his claim? Again, Abu Sufyan says, no. Heraclius says, does he break his truce? Abu Sufyan replied, no. We are at truce with him now, and we don't know what he's going to do in it. And Abu Sufyan said, I could not find opportunity to say anything against the Prophet except that time. Then Heraclius asked, have you ever had... And Abu Sufyan is the pagan leader, right? So he's not even Muslim at this point. A war with him? And he, Abu Sufyan said, yes. What was the outcome of the battles? Well, sometimes we were victorious and sometimes he was victorious. And then Heraclius asked, what does he order you to do? And Abu Sufyan replied, he tells us to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything along with him and to renounce all that our ancestors had said. He orders us to pray, to speak the truth, to be chaste and to keep good relations with our kith and kin. Heraclius asks, Straight from the devil! This is exactly what I understood when I read the Quran. As I said numerous times before, I tried to find the devil within the Quran. But instead, I'm getting this message. Worship God alone. Do not associate anything with him. Do not worship anything alongside with him. Pray, speak the truth and be chest. Keep good relations with your kith and kin. And this was the great shock to me. I know for Muslims this is nothing new, but you have to understand my perspective. As a Christian, I get into reading the Quran and I come with a preconceived notion that it comes straight from the devil because this is what I've been told. Islam from the devil because they renounce Christ. But then you keep on reading and you find out that they do not renounce Christ. Christ aka the Messiah. Christ means the Messiah. So directly you see that the Quran is speaking of Jesus as as the Messiah and therefore cannot be anti-Christ in the clearest sense. And moreover, it calls you to the worship of God and to pray to only God and to be a good person, basically. So how can this be from the devil then? Good relation with our kith and kin. Heraclius asks the translator to convey the following. I asked you about his family and your reply was, that he belonged to a very noble family. In fact, all the prophets come from noble families amongst their respective peoples. I question... And this is why I believe that noble, yet again in this context, must mean truthful. Because if we look at Jesus, for example, he doesn't come from a rich family at all. ...whether anybody else among you claims such a thing. And your reply was in the negative. If the answer had been in the affirmative, I would have suspected this man was following the previous man's statement. Then I asked you whether any of his ancestors was a king, and you said no. If you had said yes, I would have thought that this man was trying to take back his kingdom. In other words, use the mantle of prophethood to try and take back the kingdom. Then I asked you if he was ever accused of telling lies before this, before his claim to prophethood, and you said no. And then I wondered, how can a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? How could a person who never lies to people lie about Allah? And in this context, as you can see, Heraclius speaks about Allah. And of course, Allah simply means the God, the creator of the universe in Arabic. Please open up a Bible in Arabic as well. And you're going to see that it states Allah too. You can even listen to Christian Orthodox chants in Arabic. And here it says Allah yet again. <laughs>
But to this very day, my fellow Christians will claim, no, Allah is not God, Allah is the devil. Can't you see it? So, okay, if Allah is the devil, why is it found in the Bible then? Follow him I about Allah. And then I asked you whether the rich people or the poor people follow him, and you said that the poor people follow him. And so it is with all the prophets. They have always True. been followed by that type of people. The prophets are always followed by the poor and the weak and the oppressed. Then I asked you whether his followers were increasing or decreasing. You said they were increasing, and that is the way of true faith until it is complete in all respects. I further asked you if there was anybody who after embracing his religion became displeased and discarded his religion, and you said no. In fact, this is the sign of true faith when its delight enters the heart and mixes with them completely. I asked you whether he had ever betrayed. You said no. And so the prophets never betray. I asked you what he ordered you to do and you told me that he ordered you to worship Allah and Allah alone and not to worship anything else along with him and forbade you from worshiping idols and told you to pray and to speak the truth and not commit illegal fornication. If what yep. you said is true, he will very soon occupy this place underneath my feet. And I knew it from the scriptures that he was going to appear. But I did not know that he would be from you. Nobody and if expected I could reach the Arabs. Him definitely, I would go immediately to meet him. And if I was with him, I would wash his feet. Heraclius then asked for the letter of the Prophet, which was delivered by Dia to the governor of Bura, and then it was forwarded to Heraclius to read. And this is what the letter said. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, from Muhammad, the slave of God and his messenger, to Heraclius, the ruler of the Byzantines. Byzantine, Peace be soldier. upon him who follows the right path. Furthermore, I invite you to Islam. And if you become a Muslim, you will be safe. And Allah will double your rewards. And if you reject this invitation, you will be committing a sin by misguiding your peasants. O people of the scripture, come to a word common between you and us that we worship none but Allah and that we associate nothing in worship with him and that none of us should take lords besides Allah. Then, if they turn away, say, bear witness that we are Muslims. This is, of course, the translation of a verse of the Qur'an. And Abu Sufyan added, When Heraclius had finished his speech and had read the letter, there was a great hue and cry in the royal court. And we were turned out of the court. I said to my companions, Surely the issue of Ibn Abi Kabsha, and that was a type of derogatory term they used, a nickname they used for the Prophet wasallam. His affair has become so prominent that even the king of the Byzantines is afraid of him. And then I started to become sure that he would be the conqueror in the near future until I embraced Islam. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Very cool to see it in video format, but as I said previously, this is exactly the passage that I read in Sahih al-Bukhari. And it was really surprising to me, because I didn't know what to expect of those hadiths. I only knew the hadiths from, yet again, David Wood, and he showed us all the evil things that you find in those hadiths, and therefore I didn't expect a history lesson. But reading this really gave me a flavor of who Prophet Muhammad was. Not only a religious leader, but a leader in general. Somebody that addressed the kings and the emperors of the Byzantine Empire, for example. The priests, the popes, and what not. So he was a man of great ambition. Not only a spiritual leader within his own midst, but someone that wanted to spread the word around the world. And this, of course, confirms yet again the claim of Islam 
Islam that Prophet Muhammad came for the whole wide world. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Allah